In this video, I'm gonna show you how I went from standard to cool mod with my Volpool Hexapod. Now I've already featured this Volpool Hexapod robot a few times on this channel. You may not have known that even though it's for sale in the Volpo Robotics store, it's actually open source. What does that mean? We have access to all of the source files and we can change them and create our own modifications with ease. Stay tuned and I'll show you how to locate, modify and 3D print your own mods for the Volpo Hexapod using Onshape. So here we are logged into Onshape and what you need to do is click on the public tab and you'll see all types of designs here. Some of them really impressive, other ones just started and half finished and whatever else. And what we're gonna do is search for our product, which is Vorpal Hexapod. Okay, so we can see we have release one added here and we're gonna scroll down and look for the original. Here it is here, Steve Pendergrass, that is the original author. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna open this and we're gonna make a copy. Okay, so the file has loaded and that was pretty annoying to find. So I'm gonna to link to this file in the description or alternatively, you can put it on HD and type in this address here. If you can't see some of the parts, that's because they might be hidden. But interestingly, if we look at this, we will see the exact way that all of this was designed in order. This is the feature tree on the side. And fortunately for us, we don't need to repeat all of these things. We're just gonna target our specific bit, which is the cap and then go from there. So you notice at the top here, it's prompting us this document is view only and to make a copy. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Okay, we have everything loaded here and we're ready to go. You notice that there is an immense amount of features here. What I'm gonna do since I'm only interested in modifying the cap is to delete a whole bunch of them and that'll leave me with a vastly reduced amount and that should speed up everything a great deal. So I'm gonna come to cap hit the eyeball and turn it on. And then I'm gonna come up and filter by the word cap. This looks important, the lowest one down I can. So the locking ring is created there and everything underneath doesn't seem to have much to do with the cap. So what I'm going to do is to click on that one and then take away my filter. And I'm gonna be pretty brutal here. I'm gonna select everything below that and delete it and I hope that will speed up this a great deal. Okay here goes nothing, let's delete. There's still a lot happening here but already it's vastly reduced and the document should run a lot faster. Now the first thing I'd recommend doing is simplifying this and then printing just the locking ring part because we want to make sure that the tolerances of our printer are correct and therefore we're right to modify the rest. It would be a horrible shame to do something really fancy on top and then print it out and find that it didn't fit. So let's do that first. Spin the camera to the front. I'm gonna start a sketch on the front plane. I'm gonna to go to U for use, this one here. And I am going to trace this line here. And we're gonna use that to extend into a box, which we're gonna extrude and delete everything on top. This is a pretty crude way of doing this, but it should work just fine. So we're gonna go through all, on remove, and then in the second position, we're also gonna say through all. And our motor scope is the cap, perfect. Tip the tick, and that should leave us with just the ring. So now I'm gonna do a quick extrude just to make this a tiny bit taller, so there's a little bit more to grab onto. And I'll just add five mils. Now we can export and 3D print, hopefully a pretty fast print. We'll see if it fits and if it does, we'll come back and modify it properly. So here is the printed part compared to the original. You can see it's just the base part with the little tab and let's see how it fits. Excellent, that's exactly what we want. We know our tolerances on our 3D printer are correct and we can get back to designing. We have the very excellent news that our part fits. So it's back to Onshape and to model our custom top. 
Let's make this a little bit easier. I'm gonna hide the parts that I don't want and I can click on them and it will highlight what they are. So I can hide that one. And pretty sure I know the base is the base. And that leaves me with my ring, which I know is fitting to add on to. So now that we've got this tidied up, the design I'm gonna go for is kind of like a pointy, sleek helmet. Think like a reverse teardrop with a couple of slots act as eyes and vents. It's gonna make the Volpal Hexapod look a little less cartoonish and a little bit more menacing, I would say. So my strategy for this is to draw it solid first and then hollow it out and then use a Boolean to join it onto this ring. I'm gonna start by doing a sketch. I'm gonna press P to show the plane so I can select the front plane and then P to hide them again. And I'm gonna use the use tool, which is U on the keyboard or to click this button here. And I'm gonna trace the outside and that will give me a line to snap to the middle and everything I do after that will be matching exactly. I'm gonna come from the center point up and then do a three point arc. And let's go for something fairly sleek here. We'll come and make this a normal just so I don't get any weird points or dimples on the top. And I think that looks pretty good. I might make it just a little bit taller. And now I'm ready to revolve. So I'll click in the middle, well that's done automatically, and then set my revolve axis here. And it's very important the way I'm doing this to make it a new part. Great. Okay, new sketch, once again on the front plane. And like I did before, I'm going to trace this one here. If it's in the way, I can hide it to see what I'm doing. Typically gonna draw a straight line across the bottom to close that up. And then I'm gonna do something slightly different, which is to sketch, hide part six. I actually wanna sketch on top of this flat surface here. And once again, I'm going to U for use, trace this, and I'm gonna draw my pointy cap out the front. I'm gonna draw a dotted set line down the middle. Set that to construction. And then finally, I think I will trace this out a bit and use my tangent constraints to make sure everything comes out smoothly. Now this is obviously wrong, so let's set this one to vertical. And just to be sure that everything's working how I want it to be, I'm gonna tell these two to be mirrored. Excellent. Now if I change one side, the other side should change. And I can tweak it as I feel necessary. And I think I'm gonna leave it somewhere like that. Great, okay. So to help my loft, I'm gonna edit my original sketch and I'm gonna put a point on the top here. It should snap to the midpoint, there we are. And you'll see the benefit of this in a moment because now we're coming to loft. I'm gonna click our first profile. I'm gonna click our second. And by default, no preview will appear. It's gonna have trouble working out what to do here. So we're going to go to match vertices and we're gonna tell it what we want to connect to what. So we're gonna click the top point that we just added in. I'm gonna click the bottom here and all of a sudden it's giving me a nice preview. Now to get this coming out a little bit smoother, I'm gonna play with the start and end profile conditions. So we want them to be on normal to profile, probably just for the top actually. I'm not gonna do it for the second one. And by changing this number, we can decide how smoothly it comes out before it starts to taper down to the other profile. So if we double it, it's gonna have more of a bulge, like so. And if we make the number smaller, it's gonna be a little bit pointier. But I think I was quite happy with one, so I'm gonna leave that there. I'm gonna tell it to add, but I don't want it to add to the cap, I want it to add to my new part six here. That's more like it. So I'm gonna hit the tick. And that's created quite an interesting shape and I think that will be worthy of what I'm after here. So I'm gonna press on. Next thing I'm gonna do is to create a plane and I'm gonna put it right out in front here. So I'm gonna hit P for plane. Select the front plane and then drag it way out in front. Hit the tick and start a sketch on that plane immediately. Press N to look from the normal 
And like we always do, we're gonna trace some of these features so we have things to snap to. I'm gonna come up to the rectangle tool and do a center point rectangle. I'm gonna snap to the middle of here and what I'm aiming to do is to put in a slot. And this is gonna make the visual style that I'm after for this robot. I'm gonna use a constraint on the bottom here. So I'm gonna lock coincident constraint between here and here. It doesn't really matter that it overlaps the top because I'm going to be cutting with it. And now I'm gonna draw my eye design. So I want some piercing eyes. So I might start with a straight line on the bottom. I'll use a three point arc up here, which is also gonna come here. This might look stupid and I might need to change it, but for now I'm just gonna get it down. And then something like that. It's gonna extend this up here. That means I can use the mirror tool using that center line and then tracing all of the bits over to the other side. And I close the sketch. Okay, I'm not gonna extrude straight away because first I need to hide this and measure the thickness of my ring so I can get my hollow section to match. Anything in on shape, you can just click two sections and it will tell you what it is. So we've got 2.194. That's a bit of an awkward number, but we'll see if we can work with it. I'm gonna come up to my shell tool and I'm gonna click the bottom surface and input that measurement, 2.194. Let's try and actually get it correct this time. Okay, that's what I'm after. I can now do a Boolean union to join the pieces together. So this piece and this piece. I can then come up to extrude, click all of my bits, and I'm gonna tell them to come up to the face and that face is going to be the front plane because it's exactly halfway through the object. I'll scroll up the top and manually select the front plane. And also I have to put it on subtract. Okay, that's pretty much what I'm after. So I'm pretty happy with that. I'm gonna hit the tick. So I'm gonna consider this part finished. Obviously you can design as much as you want here, but for me, that's all I want. So I'm gonna come to export going to call it new cap and now I'm going to process it for 3d printing so my choice here is to use simplify 3d and I think I'm going to do some manual support to help this thing out I don't want to peel off too much but I definitely want a little bit so it doesn't droop and get ruined so to do that I'm going to come to the support tool I think I'll turn down the resolution so they're not too big and I'm going to put some under the tip here definitely put one inside here. Shouldn't be too hard to remove, I hope. Another little one halfway. Same on the other side. And this is probably the most distinguishing feature of Simplify 3D compared to other free slices. And for me, one of the reasons I was attracted to paying money for it. Let's prepare this one. Yes, we want support turned on. And it's giving us a build time of 51 minutes, which is probably gonna be more like two hours, but let's get it on the printer and start the time lapse. So here is our 3D printed part. This is a lesson in impatience. The settings I put for this to print and the way I modeled the design were really not ideal. I really should have addressed all of these overhangs here by printing with full support or by changing the design so it came out gradually. Probably would have also been beneficial to have a more pointy dome on top just to help the smoothness of the gradient. And really, I probably shouldn't have printed this so fast. So it's safe to say this is probably the worst print I've done on my i3 Mark III so far but that's entirely my fault and not the fault of the printer. 
Anyway, the important thing, how does it fit? Not too bad. It's a little bit tight for height with the electronics. I probably should have had my straight section a little bit higher, but apart from that, it fits pretty good and I think it looks pretty good too. It's now got this pointy angular look. It looks quite sinister, like it wants to do some damage. If you're using your Vorpal Hexapod in combat mode, well, maybe this is gonna intimidate your opposition. Now, this principle that I've showed you works with any other document. If you're designing something like a 3D printer, for instance, you'll find if you search in the public section of Onshape, there'll be stepper motors, there'll be fans, there'll be all sorts of things like that. For a quick effort, I'm pretty happy with this. It's gonna wrap it up for today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.